Games. Gaming. Gamer. I'm a gamer. And if there's one thing I know gamers love, it's farming. And who can blame them? Everyone loves farming. It's like human nature. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the first murder that ever occurred was because some guy was jealous of how well his brother farmed. That's why games like Stardew Valley sold so well, because it allowed people to live out their gamer farmer dreams. I was playing Stardew Valley just the other day when a question that I'm sure we've all had before crossed my mind. Where is Stardew Valley? Like, obviously the game exists in its own universe, seeing as it has dwarves and goblins and weird little toaster ghosts, but like, where in our world resembles Pelican Town the most? Like, if I wanted to go full McDonald, where would I go? Well, for starters, I think we can answer this question the quickest by using the process of elimination to eliminate every country that is not America. This obviously is a big conclusion to be making, so you might be wondering, what makes me so confident that the game takes place in America? Is it the fact that the only developer who worked on the game is American? Or maybe because the architectural style of the houses mirror that of a colonial style? Maybe, but I think the most compelling evidence is the fact that they have football, baby, yeah! America's pastime! And also because the primary motivation of the game is to escape an oppressive capitalist regime that prioritizes convenience over basic human rights. Yeah, woo! So great, it's settled. Stardew Valley takes place in America. But where in America? I'm kidding, I'm not gonna use the Vsauce music. Please don't sue me, Mr. Sauce. But really, where in America could Stardew Valley be? When choosing our location, there's some requirements that we're gonna have to be looking for. Our Pelican Town needs to have a valley, mountains, an ocean to the south, and also needs to be somewhere where almost every in-game crop, plant, or fish is either native or naturalized. Because farming is so essential to the game, let's start with that. For this, we're going to need to address the good book. The Farmer's Almanac contains a list of nearly every crop that can be grown in the United States, including where the crops can be grown according to its hardiness zone. What's a hardiness zone? I'll let Weatherman Anthony field that question. Hi, I'm Weatherman Anthony. A hardiness zone is defined as a geographic area defined to encompass a certain range of climatic conditions relevant to plant growth and survival. Higher hardiness zones tend to be hotter, and lower hardiness zones tend to be colder. Out of all the crops that are grown in-game, the vast majority of them could be grown in hardiness zones 5 through 7, with most of the outliers being crops that grow better in warmer climates, like the hot pepper, which grows best in zones 9 through 11. Because zone 7 is the warmest of our choices, it's safe to assume that our real-life pelican town is located in zone 7. The same can be said with the forageable items, with a vast majority of them being found in zones 5 through 7 as well. What's interesting to note is that a lot of these forageable items are commonly found on the east coast, narrowing down our potential areas significantly. Now, before I go on, I can already hear the naysayers in the comments saying, Anthony, how can you narrow our options down to the east coast alone based on just hardiness zones without considering options like Sitka, Alaska? To which I would say, fish. You see, while there are areas outside of the east coast that have the correct hardiness zones and climate, they simply lack the fish. While designing the fishing feature in Stardew Valley, the creator went a little concerned apeshit and just added any type of fish he felt like, which is great for keeping the game interesting, but is really inconvenient for us considering the fact that half of these fish don't even live anywhere near each other. I wish I was joking, but this game has fish like the large and smallmouth bass, which are native to North America, being caught in the same waters as the Dorado, which is only found in Brazil. Because the fish population in Stardew Valley is so unrealistic, we'll have to accept the fact that we won't find an area with all of these fish in the real world and settle for as many as we can. Sitka, Alaska was a great candidate for Pelican Town, seeing as it had a southern sea, nearby mountains, and was located in a temperate zone 7 climate. The problem is, Alaska's waters weren't friendly to like 90% of the in-game fish. The only other coastal zone 7 areas were to be found on the east coast. Now, I know for a fact that some of you in the audience are starting to put two and two together. America's Atlantic coast? Areas of extreme marine biodiversity? Why, that must mean it's in Chesapeake Bay. To which I would respond by calling you an idiot and then proceed to shame you in front of the entire class for even trying to participate. Yeah, the Chesapeake Bay area is located in a zone seven and does have a ton of fish listed in the game, but is located on what is known as the Atlantic Coastal Plain, meaning that there are no mountains nearby, which is a requirement for our pelican town. Not only that, but there are no salmon in the Chesapeake Bay area, and the salmon are a really big deal to me, so that's a no-go on Chesapeake Bay, see me after class. So now things are starting to look pretty hopeless. 
I mean, where are you going to find another area that has a climate suitable for growing all these crops while still containing a significant change in elevation, while also having all these fish being native or naturalized without sacrificing boom baby Connecticut? That's right, apparently Connecticut has a nice little portion that is a hardiness zone 7, which has the sound of Long Island just to the south, and is located inside a valley, and has the Atlantic salmon. I mean, come on. What more could you ask for? This is, it's got the salmon. It's got everything. As for the mountains, straight out of the Bible, you got Mount Carmel, and that's all I need to see. Case closed. This is a religious, this is a religious location. This is beautiful. 